Hi, and thanks for joining me on my webinar. My name is Joe Kerbach, and just in case you don't know who I am, uh, let me tell you. <laughs> um, I'm an architectural and interior designer. I have been working in the industry for about 20 years now. Uh, I'm Australian. Uh, I studied architecture and finished my degrees in Australia and have been basically working most of my career um, on international projects and projects based from the UK, uh, Scandinavia and Europe. Uh, I worked on some projects in the US, Oman, um, uh, Egypt, Africa, uh, Croatia. So I've worked on um, projects around the world on convention centers, um, high-end hotels. I've worked on um, small hotels, boutique hotels, um, also high-end projects for domestic, uh, also high-density domestic projects uh, for developers, um, small developers, and also uh, kind of really small projects uh, for myself. So I... I have kind of like a broad range of experience. Um, most interior designers either go into commercial or interior uh, or domestic and kind of stay there and um, work their way up. I uh, basically dabbled in everything and uh, have um, contacts in, in a lot of areas of the industry, which is um, uh, really great. I can understand why you would want to uh, set up your own business as an interior designer. It's been one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I absolutely love working in this industry. It's um, it's basically a dream come true. So I can really understand why it is you would want to transition into interior design. Um, and that's what this webinar is going to be about. So I can help you. And yeah, of course, if you want help, obviously I do have a mentorship program. So that is going to, you know, you can find out more about that. But um for now, let's get into the webinar. I'm sure you're dying to find out how to set up your interior design business and the five steps that are that I think are going to guarantee you succeed. So let's get into it. The biggest question I get asked by my students or those who are trying to gain experience to transition into the interior design industry is, where do I start? How do I start? What do I do? There are obviously more ways than one, but I believe that this way that I'm going to show you is the way to succeed and, I'll sh and you'll find out why. I basically narrowed uh, the steps down into five key areas that will pretty much uh, guarantee your success if you do all of these things. So you can't just do one of them. <laughs> um, so these are the exact steps that I did to set up my own business and uh, also what I teach my mentees and my students. And so you can be confident that the system works. I want to also say that I believe this system works better than kind of the traditional route of going into interior design or studying interior design. And that's tr like basically, you know, going to a course go and then try and get a job and work your way up the ranks. I kind of believe that, well, my way is better. Firstly, because you don't have to work as an assistant, which is often basically for low wages or for free with someone who may not actually be a patient and great teacher. Uh, and secondly, because experience is the key way to build a reputation and network i suppose and also gain expertise in this field of interior design so jumping straight in and getting experience running real life projects in my opinion is the best model for success in this industry how do you set up an interior design business and what are these five things that will guarantee you succeed the first step learn key things about interior design and the profession you're going to learn this from any interior design course you go to so or just by gaining experience in the field. These are things like how to communicate visually and professionally. Um, that's really important because you'll need to know how to hold a design meeting or a charrette. Um, you'll need to know things like how to communicate your ideas in words and presentations or um, how to communicate your ideas to a builder or a tradesperson and also how to create a clear brief with a client. So obviously that is you know pretty basic stuff, but um, you, you kind of need to be shown how to do that. Or you need to figure out how to do that. Uh, the next point is how to, you need to learn how to run a project from start to finish. That's really key <laughs> because there are certain things that an interior designer has a responsibility to do along the way. And, um, you know, you need to know how to do this. So this kind of involves what documentation you'll be expected to provide at what stages of the project. Um, so what tradespeople do what jobs the different kinds of projects that you can run, also the different roles you can provide. So such as a uh, project manager or lead, con lead consultant, things like that. Um, point three is how to form legal agreements. You need to know how to form them. So you need to know things 
like how to agree what it is your client wants from you and what you're going to be paid to do for them. Also, you need to understand contracts, terms and conditions of your appointment with the client. You need to know how to make decisions about what kind of services you're going to provide uh, for every project and ensure kind of that you're trading legally in order to do that. Uh, The next point is you also need to know how to continually grow as a designer. You don't just stop once you, um, uh, you don't just stop learning. Most people um, that I see go to a course and then basically think that's it. Now I'm, I'm a designer, that's that's me, I'm, I'm set for the industry. It doesn't really work like that. Even architects, um, most designers in the industry will be learning on the job, even every single project. So every project is always different and you really want to... Um, not give yourself um uh, well you want to give yourself the best chance to succeed by not being too afraid to take on new projects even if they're um kind of a little bit if you're feeling they're a little bit too hard because it's like join the club all of us uh, are doing that we're we are learning um a little bit more with every project so um that's pretty normal also you need to um continually grow and um you know uh, make the right connections in the industry you need to kind of gain more experience and know where to get the right and most accurate knowledge so you know keep your knowledge up to date when things change and you also need to find a support network so that you're not alone and isolated because as soon as you find that you start working from home or which is you know usually what most people want or have that laptop lifestyle Um, it can be quite isolating. You want to be able to kind of reach out and speak to people and having a support network is pretty critical to that. Uh, I do kind of urge you to, if you are serious about a a career in interior design, find these things and definitely include them into your strategy for setting up your own business. Can you see that it wouldn't be wise to set up an interior design business without at least knowing these things? I think the biggest mistake um, most people make when they are trying to set up an interior design business is that they kind of stop here. You'll see that we're about to get onto slide two um, and and the next step. It's kind of interesting because most people stop at step one (laughs) and think, yay, I'm an interior designer. That's great. Let's set up my business. It, It kind of, you know, that is one of like five steps. And you'll see this is probably why if you've tried to set up your own business in the past, this is probably the biggest reason why it's failed because, um, or if you try to get work in the industry, um, this is also one of the reasons why. Because all you've done is gotten the information that pretty much is the fun part of interior design. It's kind of, you, you've kind of gotten the, the best bits. Uh, and you'll see what I mean um, as we keep going. So step two, the next step to set up your interior design business and guarantee success is to set up and follow a functional and profitable business structure. Yes, you're setting up an interior design business as an interior designer, but it's still a business. So you have to run it like a business. And that is probably the biggest mistake I see even successful interior designers making. The majority of interior designers that I've seen in business and have worked with, except for commercial interior designers, it's that's a very different kind of industry, I'll say. The majority I see is honestly mayhem. Not many people, not many interior designers actually run an interior design business like a business. They run it like crazy artists. (laughs) And uh, that's not a recipe for success. Let's get through these. Um, So the first thing you need to do is you need to decide on your business legal and trading structure. That includes things like decide what kind of business type you want to trade under. You need to set up your legal trading name or confirm your tax and financial structures. Uh, You also need to understand what laws and legal liability apply to you and your business, right? And then also get the right insurances in place. I mean, these are basic things, but you can't imagine how many people kind of trading without insurance. That's, that's really silly (laughs) and kind of scary, not only for your clients, but also for yourself. Next step is set up a functional business that is relevant to your long-term goals. So things like setting up legal structures, such as your terms and conditions, financial structures, like how to receive money. (laughs) Um, Then also practical structures like your internal systems and the kind of daily frameworks that will help you run your business. So this is really important. Without these in place, you'll kind of be all over the place, if that makes sense. Next thing is you'll need to follow a successful and trusted business strategy. We weren't born with the knowledge of how to run a business (laughs) and you wouldn't be expected to have that. So you need to learn um, a business system 
that works specific to interior design in the modern world and not interior design from 40 years ago because the industry has changed quite a lot. So you also need to put systems and strategies in place to help you like stay focused during the day and pretty much do what you want to do, which is the job you love, right? So rather than waste your time sitting on the phone for hours solving problems, um, you want to you know make sure that everything's running smoothly so that you can uh, make the best use of your own time. You also want to leverage the parts of your business that are making you money or kind of bringing you the most joy so you know you've got to find the things that are the most valuable in why you're doing this so that you can pretty much live the lifestyle that you're dreaming of so you know the reason you're wanting to transition into interior design or set up an interior design business um, is because you want to change your life in some way right you want to make sure that you're leveraging those really fun parts and all the other things that you probably don't find as fun at least to taken care of so you're not neglecting those bits of your business too like most interior designers do <laughs> And then you also want to use trusted, efficient working methods that help you save time whilst building a business that makes you money. Students graduate knowing mainly the fun stuff. If you go and do uh, pretty much any interior design course, you're going to be learning the stuff that is basically reserved for the boss in a business. So if you were actually a graduate from, and actually a lot of my students are graduates from other courses who have not been able to find work and understandably because the work that they're trained to do in these courses is the work that the best part of the job, which is fun while you're studying, of course. But the reality is, is you're not very useful to somebody who's already got their own business because you're going to come in at a point and only know the parts that are the fun parts that the boss wants to do. So you want to be helpful and uh, learn the bits and pieces that actually can be of benefit to someone else if you want, you know, if if your idea is, is... to actually freelance and work for other people and get jobs that way getting more of an education in the basically the harder parts of interior design is going to be more um you know useful for you and um more likely for you to succeed when you're running your own business you can you'll find out you'll you'll see that um when you're able to hire people yourself uh, that these people you know you don't you're not going to want to hire someone that is just going to be doing the drawing for you uh, sorry you're you're designing for you because you want them to be able to draw so what I'm I suppose what I'm trying to say is you don't want someone um, to come work for you and give them the best bits of the business and like defining your brand or your style you want to have that fun and you want to design that style for yourself as you can see if um, if you aren't if you haven't learned all of these other things you're only specializing in one very specific area, which is highly unlikely for you to succeed in that area, especially if you're looking for work or if you're um, trying to freelance for someone else. The next step uh, to set up your interior design business that guarantees success is create a customized marketing strategy that is fit for this century. <laughs> so yes, you can't imagine how outdated and behind the times the majority of this industry is. This goes back to point one, I suppose, when you think now that, okay, great, I'm an interior designer and you, you don't need to continue to grow and learn. That is basically a sure way not to succeed because you need to stay abreast of the industry in interiors, but also in business and marketing. So these are strategies that are working today. How do you do that? So you do these things. You create a brand that you love. And that helps you to stand up from the crowd. That includes things like understand what a brand is and why you need one. (laughs) Also, you need to decide what the purpose and feel of your brand is. And this is fun stuff, you know. Okay, I I said earlier that this is kind of the harder stuff, but it's fun too, creating a brand. It's it's wonderful. Um, You also need to do things like create a brand that is in line with what your big vision is for your business. So kind of thinking about where you're headed so not just taking a stab in the dark and going, well, I just want to be an interior designer. Um, you want to have a vision and understand what your ideal cl- client also wants from your brand and your vision. So see how all those things tie in together. The next point is, or the next step is you need to research your target market and your niche. So most interior designers think that they can serve everyone. Um, and I see this a lot. And to be honest, I made this mistake as well at the beginning. And the reality is, is marketing in the marketing industry is if you are serving everyone, that means you are really serving and attracting no one. The key to success is to know your niche. Basically, you need to know your target market. Then you will basically say the right thing to your ideal clients and therefore 
they will give you an easy yes to working with you. And that is pretty much exactly how I managed to work with over 30 clients in my first year of business without a portfolio, um, without a long list of contacts who would help me find potential clients, uh, without a large amount of money to invest into business advertising. Actually, in fact, the first 60 clients I attracted in my interior design business, I got for free. And I still to this day do not pay a penny for advertising for that part of my business. I still don't pay for getting clients in, in my interior design part of my business. Let's get on to point, which is create products and packages that your clients will find irresistible. I suppose that makes sense, but what does that include? It's You need to understand what it is your clients want. You need to kind of package and present your products and services in a way that attracts the right people to you. You need to get the price point balance right for both you and your client. You need to learn the skills to basically get an easy yes from potential clients so that you don't sound sleazy or salesy or discount your services heavily. Basically so you can get clients. <laughs> can you see how all of this, when it's all rolling in your business, you don't have to worry about where your next client's coming from. And you know you don't have to get desperate You know when you need to pay your bills. This stuff's already going. And this is why you need balance in your business. And can you see why now, uh, even before we get on to the, the last two points, how critical um, it is to kind of include these other bits and pieces into your business strategy and, you know, while you're setting up a business because, um, or your interior design business, because stopping at step one is where most people stop and that's why they fail. The next step to setting up your interior design business is to formulate a business framework that works for you and your lifestyle. This is a good one, um, mainly because the type of people we are as interior designers and the lifestyle we pretty much want to lead, it varies from designer to designer and person to person, right? So actually most of the people that move into this industry, and I've seen this, um, they do it because they love interior design, but um, they don't realize that they are trying to fit their idea of what they're going to do as an interior designer into someone else's mold. Does that make sense? That it may not actually work for you your business and your particular lifestyle so you you really need to kind of customize this to work for your specific business and your lifestyle let's get on to the next step having uh, a key so next step is having a key system in place that facilitates an easy and functioning working environment for you and your business model so that's things like um I suppose these are things that people often overlook actually in their day. Um, They kind of blame low productivity or lack of motivation. Also too many distractions or interruptions. So you need to kind of organize your day. You need to have things like how to organize your accounts, how to organize your files, how to organize your staff, invoices or systems that deal with deliveries and returns. So these things need to be in place so that you're not wasting hours each day looking for a file or something and you're going to have a lot of files. <laughs> so uh, you want to get organized um, and get set some systems up. And, you know, I learned this from working for big companies. It was um, it was the bigger design companies that I worked for that um, forced me to work in a systemized way. And I can tell you it was the best thing that ever happened to me because when I was um, working for small companies and, you know, those one man bands, I helped them a lot by implementing systems. It was just I couldn't believe how erratic their working style was and how much time they wasted just looking for stuff because it wasn't organized well and also other everyone else in the in the office doing things their own way which is kind of crazy and totally inefficient so the next step is you need to have a business plan or strategy that you stick to and want to follow so just because you've got one um, doesn't mean you you're going to want to follow it <laughs> um, that happened to me at the beginning too so you need to create a business plan that is inspiring but also gives you clear, actionable steps to help you achieve your business goals. So don't forget you need to have a business goal in order to take steps to achieve it. Um, Then you also know what motivates you and what doesn't. You need to know what things you usually avoid doing and take steps to ensure those things also get done. So that's a big one. Don't kind of glance over the fact that um, you will avoid wanting to do certain things and then those things will lag behind and not get done. You also need to keep a diary, stick to schedules and allocate time for specific tasks. So the reason why so many interior designers fail to deliver what they want or what they say they will do in the time they say that they, that they will is because often kind of perfectionists and usually kind of enjoy their job a lot, which is fine. But um, these, com- these kind of traits combined with an inefficient way of working means that you end up missing deadlines 
kind of have to work late or you lose money by having to pay someone overtime or to kind of complete tasks that you because you weren't organized so you need to learn and implement ways that will help you pretty much do things like make decisions on projects easily and clearly know what tasks need to be completed in what order to be the kind of the most efficient for the project you also need to know how much time is required i suppose and allocating the required time at the outset to the project or task then um, you also need to keep track of the time spent that's really important and ensure you're kind of on track with your project goals so what i want you to be able to see is that the way you work as an interior designer and uh, is, is not necessarily or just your skill or ability as an interior designer is kind of the key driving force as to whether you're going to succeed um, not only setting up your interior design business but in this career many kind of talented and great designers out there struggling to make ends meet they don't really understand why potential clients aren't really flocking to them so I know that you want to succeed that's why you kind of came to this uh, webinar so if you do want to get help setting up your business uh, the right way and have me on board whilst you kind of work with your first clients then follow the link below this video and you'll be able to find out more about my mentorship program let's get to the last step and this is the most important of all of these and you'll see why now that once I explain it so the most the final and most important step to setting up your interior design business um, to basically guarantee you succeed is to basically get out of your own way <laughs> And, you know, I say this with love because um, you need to realize the difference between a hurdle and, a, and an excuse because genuinely this is what stopped me from, um, you know, succeeding at first. I really made a lot of excuses as to why something wouldn't work. Not many people realize that actually we make up stories about what the reason is for our failures. So we say that because we have anxiety or that because we are bad at public speaking or shy or poor or bad at sales or whatever our, our excuse is. We say that um, that is the reason why we can't achieve something. So there's, you know, it's some something else. It's someone else's problem. It's because of something else. The reality is that you can achieve a, quite a lot. And um, all we're trying to do here is set up a design business. So it's really, you know, you've seen other people do it. It's possible, it's humanly possible to do this and it is possible to, su to succeed. It's been proven. <laughs> I've done it um, and you can too. Uh, you need to feel the fear and do it anyway. So this is um, the main thing that stops most of us from taking action on behalf of our dreams um, is fear. And most of us don't realize that the most successful people in the world still have fear about the things they do. So fear is normal and... Pretty much everyone, including top sports and business people, still feel fear. So the difference is, is that they identify that the fear is there, but they don't really let fear hold them back. They don't allow fear to make decisions or run the show, if that makes sense. The, the fear is actually ingrained in our DNA. Um, it's there to protect us, but it doesn't distinguish between a lion chasing us down the street and stepping out of our comfort zone. <laughs> so I promise you the, the main reason the majority of people will fail uh, when setting up their interior design business is probably because of fear and um, fear of failure more than anything else they fear that um, they're not good enough they fear that they won't make enough which was my my biggest fear uh, fear that they wouldn't um, be able to provide a great service or the oh, you know there's a million other excuses that um, are pretty much nonsense so and I say that with the utmost love because I literally went through this myself in 2012 I created a product called uh, design my room and it, honestly, it was the best kept secret on the planet and still is because I was too afraid to tell anyone about it. So my belief at the time was that it failed because I needed a lot of money to market it. What I realize now is that I had so many false beliefs and excuses. There was no way that that business would have ever succeeded unless I took the steps to overcome my own kind of inner BS and follow these steps myself. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming to join me on, the, on this webinar and thanks so much Um for sticking around this long i hope you came you got what you came for and you um you know have um now got some uh actionable steps that you can take away and really um you know have a chance of succeeding because um there's not many people out there that are going to tell you this stuff and of course if you want some help to do this um you don't have to do it alone Obviously, I would love to help you do this and set up your own business in interior design. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And um, 
I love teaching this. So um, if you want to uh, find out more, just uh, you can scroll down the page or click the link below. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon.